So here we are again, funny women of a certain age, the second special. Ah, oh, I know. You thought this was going to be a one-off. Listen, I've been doing stand-up for 40 years, and I'm 61 years old. Maybe I get a pity fuck, but I don't get a pity special. I'm so excited about the show tonight. Um, just the talent is unbelievable. I identify as a stand-up comedian, like first and foremost. We're literally standing on a New York street corner, and we're so old, no one's yelling anything to us. <laughs> I've been doing stand-up for 42 years. There's still nothing better than going on stage and telling jokes to live drunks. It doesn't matter whether it's stand-up or comedy writing, I always tell women to pursue it because, for example, when I was at Seinfeld, I know that a man would have never pitched, Elaine thinks that the Korean manicurists are talking about her behind her back. Right, absolutely. Because that happened to me. So I always say to women, go into the field because we have experiences absolutely. and funniness that doesn't happen to men, absolutely. and we have to use that. <laughs> is this. Thank you all for being here. Oh my God, I am so excited. What a pleasure to work with all these women tonight. Yeah. But outside of here, not so rosy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies, we still have big strides to make. You ready for this? Girlfriend of mine just got a new job. First question the new boss asked her was if she could make a good cup of coffee. Oh. Yeah, she stormed right out of that Starbucks. <laughs> So here we are, funny women of a certain age. Well, I'll get specific with you. What the hell? Uh, a couple months ago, I turned 63. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's so funny. My agent came to my show last week, and afterwards he's like, why are you telling people in the audience how old you are? And I'm like, uh, because it gets applause. <laughs> Yeah, getting older, it's a bitch. You know what the worst part is? You ever have to enter your age online? <laughs> Sit there scrolling. <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> but now that I told you how old I am, let's see how old you all are. Do you have an old timey first name like me, Carol? <laughs> Are you named Kathy, Susan, Linda, <laughs> Mindy? These are all names that tell the world you're not 30 anymore. <laughs> There's no babies being named Carol. No. And here's what's wild, okay? I go to Starbucks every day. I cannot tell you how many times when the baristas ask my name and I've said Carol, they've asked me, with a C or a K? <laughs> with a C or a K. Yeah, it's actually with a hard Q. <laughs> yeah, like in Qatar. <laughs> Another old timey first name of the guys of my generation is Richard. Yes, Richard, popular name. And of course, we all know the nickname for Richard would be... Dick. Dick. <laughs> Dick. Yeah, can't go around calling people Dick now. <laughs> Are you kidding? Especially in the workplace. Two seconds, you have HR up your butt. <laughs> yeah, Ms. Leifer, we received a complaint. Apparently, you called Richard in accounting a dick. <laughs> I didn't call him a dick, I called him Dick. Well, I'm 
sorry, but your argument is pretty half-cocked. <laughs> sorry if you feel like I'm giving you the shaft. <laughs> Bulls in your court. <laughs> Plastic surgery? Haven't had any. Nope, I'm for real. <laughs> well, mostly because I'm afraid. I mean, so many of these procedures are so whack, aren't they? Oh my God, have you heard about this one? I'm not even making this one up, okay? Where they take the fat from a woman's buttocks and inject it into the lips. <laughs> Brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, kiss my ass. <laughs> Yeah, what can I say? I'm old. I thought WikiLeaks was a new type of pad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I am totally obsessed with, though? You know that life alert button? Yeah, I know I'm a little young for it, but it's amazing. Like, you just push it, and they're there, like, two seconds later. I have a feeling, though, I might get a little devious with it, though. You know, I'd be like, help, I've fallen, and I'd love a turkey sandwich. <laughs> but I like to think I'm still pretty hip, pretty happening with the young people. Well, I work with a lot of young writers, you know, and uh, like last week, I went to lunch with this guy who's like 23, and uh, this great song, came over the PA in the restaurant. <laughs> and I said to him, I wish I could find out what the song is. I really like it. And he said to me, why don't you Shazam it? <laughs> and I actually went, Shazam. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing I love about getting older. Oh, I do. Senior discounts. Oh, yeah. You like a bargain like me, right? Yeah, but I'll be very honest with you guys. Um, a big reason why I'm here tonight is because I got a Groupon to perform. <laughs> but it's a different world, different world than when I was growing up. See it everywhere. Like, take, for instance, tattoos. Okay, when I was growing up, tattoos were like for sketchy people. You know, like unsavory sailors. <laughs> Inmates from cell block B. <laughs> yeah, now my Aunt Ruth in Boca has a tattoo. <laughs> Look, it's my brisket. Technology, isn't it amazing how far we've come? You know, my mom is gone now, but I think of her all the time. You know what invention my mom would have flipped for? The navigation system in the car. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Another woman talking to her the entire time she's in the car? <laughs> are you kidding? This is a Jewish woman's dream. <laughs> and you know how you can program the accent? You know, she'd set it to, like, Cedarhurst, Long Island. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put you on the Long Island Expressway now. <laughs> no, no, you know what? No, I'm not going to, no. <laughs> no, and you know why? They drive like maniacs on that LIA, like maniacs. You get on there, you take your life in your hands. No, we're doing surface streets. We're doing surface streets only. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> Tatla, I only had an English muffin for breakfast. <laughs> and they're not very filling. And oh my God, I give all, look out, make a left, make a left. <laughs> And that's what we call GPS. <laughs> you get to live it! Thank you so much! Thank you! Everybody thinks when you're a road comic, it's this glamorous life. See this? 
This is what it's like to be a road comic, okay? This is the green room. And where they put you up is a comedy condo, which is a broken down one bedroom apartment that you have to share with three other male comics. And the number one rule in comedy condo etiquette, you never eat the mayonnaise. Why? Someone's put his dick in it. Thank you so much. Holy shit, we're doing another one! <sighs> so I recently turned 61. A lot of young people want to know what it's like being in your 60s. So basically, this is it. There's a lot of moaning. <laughs> but it's not from sex. Let me explain what I mean. So last weekend, I was at my sister's house for a barbecue, right? So I said I'd help clean up. So I'm in the kitchen, her and her husband in the living room. I'm doing the dishes. All of a sudden, I hear this. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm doing the dishes going, are they fucking in the living room? <laughs> I walked in, they were trying to get off the couch. <laughs> I am proud about my age, okay? I'm so proud about my age. And when I was in Los Angeles promoting the first special, I would talk about being in my 60s, and the young LA women, they were so adorable, like, oh my God, Carol, you're so brave talking about your age. I'm like, I don't go into burning buildings, I tell dip jokes for a living, okay? Calm down, calm down. And this one young girl, this one L.A. girl, she was like, Carol, I know you don't like plastic surgery, but I got to tell you about this new thing that they're doing in L.A. It's called vaginal rejuvenation. Have you heard about this? I know, look at the look of you, like, what? Right. No, listen what this is. It's plastic surgery for your vagina to make it look younger. Now, we have all seen bad facelifts, right? <laughs> What's a bad facelift? If you get a bad doctor for down there, what's it gonna look like? That's not pretty is what I'm saying. It's just not pretty. I understand why some women would want to do that, you know, especially if you're a mom, because um, we're, we do have a lot of moms here tonight, right? Right, right? Childbirth fucks up your shit. Do you know what I'm saying? It fucks everything. First of all, they, you know, young women, like, when they hear about childbirth, they think it's beautiful and magical. And angels are singing. And unicorns are dead. You shit yourself, okay? Just so you... <laughs> A giant head comes out of a space this, this small. I don't remember much about my childbirth, but I do remember looking down and seeing the doctor sewing up my lower region. And me turning to my husband and going, might as well, you're never getting in again. <laughs> and he went, my son was born two weeks late. Okay, typical man, he wanted to stay inside as long as he possibly could. <laughs> And that little shit would not come out of me, okay? So I call my doctor, right? It was a Friday afternoon. I'll never forget this. I said, please, can I come in? Please induce me. He goes, Carol, I'm golfing this weekend. I'll induce you on Monday. But over the weekend, try to induce your baby yourself. This is actually a medical procedure. It's called natural induction. You have to make love a lot, have nipple stimulation, and take a lot of long walks. My husband hears this, and he goes, so let me get this straight. I get to fuck you, play with your tits, and tell you to go take a hike? I could do that. <laughs> I still can't, I mean, I know that I'm 61. I still can't believe that I have an adult son. I have a 27-year-old son. And I'm very close with my son. Are you close with your kids? Yeah, I'm very close. I'm very close to my son. He tells me everything. 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 And it's my fault, because I was pregnant. I took him with me. I was on the road as a baby. I took him with me, you know? He's been around comedy his whole life, you understand? So he tells me stuff. When he was 12, I was driving him to school one day, and we're at a stoplight, and here's what I hear my 12-year-old son say to me. Mommy, 
don't tell daddy, but I haven't masturbated yet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? What do you do? He's trying to communicate. So I was trying to like think, okay, I have to say the right thing. So very slow, very, very, very calmly. I said, honey, whenever you're ready, you go and do it. And then I gunned the car. I made it to school in two minutes. I'm like, get out of the car! <laughs> so when he was 14, two years later, right? We're, li uh, we're back here in New York City. He's in the shower. It's his first day of high school. I'm making breakfast for him. From the shower, I hear, Mom, there's a cut on my penis. <laughs> and in my head, I'm thinking, do you ever talk to your fucking father? <laughs> So I say to my husband, who's sound asleep, I get right in his face and go, wake up, your son has a cut on his dick. <laughs> he literally pops out of bed, he runs into the bathroom, he runs right back out and he goes, you didn't use enough lotion, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I found out, because the next day all of my lotion went missing. <laughs> And when he was 18, right, he was dating, dating a young lady and they were in love, so they decided they wanted to lose their virginity to each other. So who does he come to? <laughs> All I said was, listen, honey, just make sure you use birth control, right? Good mom, right? So he says, what happens if my girlfriend says she's on the pill, mom? I said, that could be Prozac, do not trust that little bitch. <laughs> So I once again went to my husband and said, go get, you do, go get him condoms. Now, there are reasonable men in this group. Most reasonable men would get their son a three-pack. <laughs> my husband bought him a box of 40 fucking condoms. <laughs> he went to Costco. <laughs> well, Kirkland makes an amazing condom. Thank you, Costco shoppers. <laughs> I bought him a case of Gatorade, didn't want him to get dehydrated. <laughs> but here's the best part. Here's how he told me. You would have thought he would have called me, right? He texted me. Here's the text. I'm a man now. <laughs> so I texted him back. That is great, honey. I'm gonna go fuck daddy. Love you. <laughs> And he's 27, so he's a millennial. And uh, like the people who have millennials, are they still living with you? Yeah. Oh, they're the worst, man. They leave, they come back, they leave, they come back. I moved, he found me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so he did move out. The first time he ever moved out, he was 20 years old. He was out for two years, it was really good. And then he moved back, he was having roommate problems. And I remember saying to him, well, why'd you move out? You know, we live in New York City, it's very expensive. And he goes, mom, I was starting a date. I was worried if I brought home a girl, you'd walk in on us. Like, that's horrible. I would never do something like that. But then he moved back home, he brought home a girl, and I had to, because he challenged me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a Saturday night, and the subway wasn't running, because the girlfriend lived in Brooklyn, because that's where they all fucking live. <laughs> And I said to him, I said, huh, you know, I said to the girl, I said, look, it's late, don't take an Uber, just stay over, I'll see you tomorrow, everything will be fine, right? And then I waited. <laughs> About two hours. And then I just burst into his room. Oh, you're doing it all wrong! Lift her up! Lift her up! <laughs> and then he moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. America's Got Talent was life-changing for me. I had a joke in my act that back at the time where I used the F-bomb. Just before the, the, I went on stage, the producer, he said to me, Julia, are you going to say it? And I was like, no, man, I'm not, because they'll love it. So I'm on, so I'm, I'm filming this thing. It's like 13 million people watching. And I looked at the audience and I just went, you know, fuck that. The audience just went berserk. But I saw Simon laughing and that was even better.
Look at this place. Whoa, man. Wow, look at this fantastic. It's uh, so nice to see so many people here that I don't know, and it's good to... Uh -huh. So I'm going to start um, telling you, I, I'm, uh, I'm in, I turned 65. Uh, this Please, that just means I didn't die from last year, you know. <laughs> and I'm in, I am what's officially known as the golden years. I'm in those now. And I don't know who named these things, but that's the stupidest name I've ever heard in my life. Golden years. Let me tell you something. I'm standing in front of the mirror naked this morning. And if these are the golden years, the price of gold just collapsed. <laughs> Everything's going on me. My eyes are going, my hearing's going. All right, I mean, you, know, you two, same thing. I, you know what I found this morning in my microwave? I found a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> I have no idea how it got there. I live alone, so I know I put it there. The cat's not capable of lifting such a great weight. <laughs> oh my God, so I'm telling you, I've reached this point where, uh, I don't even know if I should say this, but there are some days when I just smell funny. <laughs> For no apparent reason. I've had a lot of health problems this year. I've had more body parts moved around this year. I'm starting to feel like Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> oh my God, I had two years ago, I had both hips replaced. I had a pacemaker put in. About a month and a half ago, I had my spine rebuilt. I know. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you this. <laughs> and last Christmas, Last Christmas, I had quadruple bypass surgery. Oh. I know. <laughs> that was my Christmas present. And all I asked for in this was I wanted a puppy. That was it. <laughs> my doctor says, now, good all my new parts, I could live to be 100. I'm like, get the hell out of here. You, you do that, I'll sue you for malpractice, you bastard. <laughs> Have you ever seen 100-year-old people? They're friggin' creepy. <laughs> oh my God, they always have them on the Today Show in the morning, right? They wheel them out. Poor bastard doesn't even know where he's at. <laughs> he's looking around like, is this Iwo Jima? <laughs> right. And then they put the little cone hat on his head. Right, they pull a the chin strap down, it snaps back up, and you look like that. And then they wheel the cake out, it's got a hundred candles on it. I'm like, are you kidding? He's on oxygen, get that away from him. <laughs> and the gifts, you know, the gifts suck when you get older, right? Right? Oh, you know what? My birthday gifts, you know what I got? The list? Slippers and a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Right. And I'm supposed to get excited about this. I'm like, oh, look, it's a 5,000 piece puzzle. <laughs> and it says here on the box, it's 80% sky. <laughs> That's gonna keep me busy on those cold winter nights. Glad I got these shitty slippers to keep my feet warm. good gifts like I used to get. I want like a bike, you know, or a TV, or a vibrator. Uh, I want a life-size chocolate George Clooney, right? That I could start eating in the middle. Right, but I can't even have chocolate anymore because it constipates me. That's a big deal in old people land, constipation, right? It's such a big deal, we made it into an occasion. We call it occasional constipation. It's like a friggin' holiday now. Oh my God, constipation day's coming, constipation day's coming. I can't believe Walmart put up the constipation day decorations already. It's only September, you know. Are you going to the big constipation day parade? No, I'm not moving. 
neither is the parade. So um, I feel, you know, I've been feeling out of touch lately to the older I get, especially around young people. I want to, I want to, like, you're so young. I mean, I want to, I want to be hip, like, you know, so that you like me. <laughs> no, but I do. And it's, you know, like, I, especially with the music, I can't keep up with the music. Like, I just found out Ariana Grande is not a drink from Starbucks. <laughs> Right? I swear to God, I can't even watch the History Channel anymore. I can't, I just sit there all day going, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that too. Wait a minute, is that me running through the mud at Woodstock naked? <laughs> and the, war, the world's gotten really weird, man. It's a frightening world. We're, we're all afraid of marauders now, banditos, they're everywhere. Now they got this thing called a see something, say something hotline. Are you familiar with this? Yeah. If you don't know about it, what it is is uh, if you see something suspicious, you're supposed to call it in. It's big brother, right? Anybody uh, know the phone number for the see something? No. Anybody ever see something? But they spent all this money to train all these highly trained professionals to operate the see something, say something hotline. They'd be like, see something, say something hotline, see something? <laughs> Hi, I'm a long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> see something, say something hotline, you see something? Hi, it's my girl's birthday, can you play Freebird? It's like, <laughs> See, the thing of it is, if you actually ever see something, you're going to know it. You're going to know it right away. Like, if you ever see, say, I don't know, a coyote, <laughs> right, walking down the street on its hind legs, and it's carrying a box of dynamite. <laughs> a side of the box just says, Acme Dynamite Company. <laughs> You've seen something, you know. <laughs> so, well, you guys are fun, man. I'm, so, uh, you should know this. If you didn't know this about me, I, I, I'll tell you right now. I'm transgendered. Where are my trans folks? Let me hear you. Yeah. Really? Really? Boy, I'm usually the only one. <laughs> it's tough being trans in this country. It really is. Like, I always thought it would be so much easier if I were just gay. Seriously, gays, I could do a gay standing on my head. Right? Which would make me very popular in the gay community. <laughs> but it's hard if you, if you, you know, you could be gay and you could stay in the closet your whole life. Nobody ever has to know. Not if you're trans. You gotta come out to everybody. Everybody. You show up at work one day in heels and a skirt, people are gonna notice. <laughs> you know, does Bob look a little different to you today? <laughs> what is it, Bob? New haircut? Why don't I don't know. Just... <laughs> oh, man. And I, you know, I had to come out to my family. I had to come. I was married when I came out. Boy, should have been there for that conversation. <laughs> I took my ex out for a nice dinner. We sat her down. I said, honey, we have to talk. She's looking at me. She goes, is it another woman? <laughs> Kinda, yeah, you know. She's like, is she prettier than me? I go, yep. <laughs> All my female friends were so welcoming. They, they took me right in under the, you know, under the way. Men, not so much. They freaked out. My, my friends are like, oh my God, he's cutting it off. You're cutting it off, he's cutting it off. That's what they thought. Yeah, I'm cutting it off. They have like a penis guillotine set up for me. <laughs> I'm flying over to 17th century France. <laughs> There'll be a guy there with a pencil thin mustache, a beret, and a cigarette. He's like, are you ready to get the pee-pee cut off? <laughs> okay, move the pee-pee closer, move the pee-pee closer, move the pee-pee. And voila! 
You are a woman now. Da, ta, 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 ta. So, so surprise, surprise, I don't date much. Because uh, I confuse people. Uh, you know, like straight men don't want to date me because they think I'm a guy and that would make them gay. Uh, lesbians don't want to date me because they think I'm a guy and that would make them straight. I'm like, well, and you say I have issues, come on. <laughs> I, uh, some people have said, suggested that I uh, try one of these uh, dating websites. <laughs> well, all these websites act the same way, right? Uh, they, uh, you know, they, they make you fill out a questionnaire, right? They, they, you know, and they try to match you up with, with what you have in common with another person, right? And that, you're all smart people. You know, you don't need a, a, a website to tell you if you have something in common. So I say, match people up by what's wrong with them. <laughs> right, it's a much more efficient way to do it. Like, I'll give you an example. You match up, uh, say, the anorexics, match them up with the compulsive eaters. I mean, think about it. It's like, you gonna eat that? No, here, you can have it. <laughs> I love you, I love you. <laughs> or you match up the guys with erectile dysfunction, match them up with the vaginal dryness women. <laughs> well, I think it was like, you feel like doing it tonight? Well, I do, but I can't. Neither can I. <laughs> I love you, I love you. Or you match up the people with that sleep apnea, you know, the ones gotta wear that gas mask to bed. <laughs> match them up with the restless leg people. <laughs> this way, if they stop breathing in the middle of the night. <laughs> you got it covered, right? You'd be, you'd be laying in bed and be like, oh my God, wake up! <laughs> wake up! I love you, I love you. And I love you, thank you all so much. I've always been tough, and you have to be tough to be this age and still work in the clubs. I don't want to have to try to convince people to like me. I know who I am. There's a young generation that is not tough. I could take the whole generation out with a jar of peanuts. Oh. Hey. Well, thank you. It's nice to see people actually laughing now. It's a hard time in this country. People are always saying like, why do you think comics are having such a hard time? And it really, you wanna know why I think we are? Too many generations are alive at the same time. <laughs> That's why I'm not supposed to have to entertain all of you, <laughs> right? I'm supposed to pick a demographic and stay in my lane. But you guys want to come, there's so many. You got the greatest generations alive, baby boomer generations alive, Gen X, that's me, Gen Y, millennial, zennial. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm not supposed to go do a show and you show up with your kids. <laughs> Look around, some of you are here with your children. I don't even know my mother's first name. <laughs> it's not fair. And listen, my sweet young millennials, I know you're a little sensitive and I don't wanna pick on you. I'm not picking on you. You have something that our generation will never have again, hope. <laughs> um, they told you you could be anything you wanted. That was completely different than our house. My brother told my father, I wanna be an astronaut. He goes, you're too friggin' stupid. <laughs> That's not mean, that's career advice, okay? <laughs> and now stupid is a bad word. That's what my son, my son's 11, he came home and he said, mommy, the teacher told me stupid is a bad word. I said, tell your teacher, mommy's gotta leave a lot of other words out, stupid is staying in. <laughs> okay? 
Besides, I'd have nothing to call his father. <laughs> That's my husband, I love him. You would love him too. I'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh, I married the hot kid from the slow class, all right? So, <laughs> hey. I know who I am. I take care of me. I don't need him to do anything for me. Have sex with me and guard the perimeter. Know your role, all right? <laughs> That's it. What do I need him for? Yeah, that's, you wanna talk about equal opportunity, that's when we talk about it. Now, I love the young generations, you do your marches, you do everything, you know, you go, oh, women, women, we support women, of course I support women. How do you think that all these new young comics got here, all these broads that you've seen march out on stage, okay? <laughs> that's how they got here. Just cause I don't know how to knit a vagina hat doesn't mean I wasn't supporting women. <laughs> Okay? Some of you say you support women and you're lying. You're lying. And you go, how do you know, Tammy? I'll tell you how, because I'm not just a comic, I'm a behavioral scientist. I watch people and then I talk about them at night. <laughs> you lie and pretend you're supporting women, and I know you're lying, because you'll take a little picture, even tonight, with your friends. <laughs> little selfies of yourselves, posted up on social media and you only fix you. <laughs> you leave your friend hanging. Oh my God, you look great. Did Shrek enjoy the comedy show? <laughs> People can't handle it when you tell them the truth. I feel like Jack Nicholson half the time. You can't handle the truth, that's a problem. The problem nowadays is that life is tough. Stuff happens. My generation is getting old. I now go to the bathroom at the time I used to go out to nightclubs. <laughs> okay? I can't find the piece of paper I wrote all my passwords down. <laughs> but I did write them in cursive, so there's that. Um, there's that. Uh, you might want to be nice to an old person if you want to read the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Figure out what you're outraged about. <laughs> You think I care? I know who I am. That's it, you have to know who you are, you understand? I know because in my house, I grew up, I'm 100% Sicilian. They didn't let you pretend. Thank you, the four of you that I'm probably related to. <laughs> and I love my people, but Italian people are the worst because there's always one old Italian lady who is miserable. You could tell her, I solved, I solved, a, Cancer, I cured cancer. Meh. <laughs> uh. That was my grandma. My grandfather, now he was my best friend. The day before I got married, my grandfather showed up. I opened up the door, he goes, hey, Tam, today is the best day of your life. I said, but Pop, I get married tomorrow. He goes, I know, today is the best day. <laughs> Listen, for me, it worked out. My cousin, not so much. She's living with me, right? Because her husband was taking pictures of his penis and sending them to random broads. Not random broads. I mean, they were specific. That'd be funny if he was just like airdropping them. <laughs> See, there's the difference in generations. When I say airdrop the young people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The old people are picturing eight by 10 glossies of a penis. <laughs> with a little parachute tied on it, <laughs> being tossed out of a World War II bomber. <laughs> like sexual propaganda or something. <laughs> That's everybody sexualized now. Don't worry about those penis pictures. I'm sure there's an Amish dude right now tracing it on a piece of parchment somewhere. <laughs> He's got the candle behind him to get the proper glow. <laughs> got his quill dipping it in the inkwell. Then he's got to roll it up like a scroll and trot it to his girl's house. <laughs> he knocks on the door, hearest thou go with Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca unrolls it and she can't churn butter correctly for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they're not here and they're not gonna be watching either. So get over it. <laughs> get over it. 
tired. Just tired all the time. That's where the one thing, the youth, you have, you have energy to have sex and all your fun little things you do, like your threesomes, whatever. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you, if there was another woman in bed with my husband and I, I'd be like, you got this covered? Because I got stuff to do, <laughs> all right? I'm busy. Make me a sandwich before you leave too, all right? Because I am not gluten free. I don't know when all that stuff happened. Gluten, peanut allergies, and stop yourself. I know peanut allergies are real. I know it's a real thing. My brother had a peanut allergy in the 80s, okay? Back in the 80s, you know what my parents did? Nothing. <laughs> not a damn thing. They're like, you want that Snickers or not? So what if you swell? You don't go to school till Monday. You think they would have spent $800 on an EpiPen when it only cost $400 to have a new baby at the hospital? <laughs> Do the math. The old math, not this new stupid math that they try to tell you. I can't take it anymore. And I'm telling you, like, and I, sometimes I feel sorry for my husband because I'm always on edge. But the fact of the matter is, we don't argue over much anymore, okay? Want to know what we argue about? A lot of people have talked about this. We argue over the GPS. <laughs> he will listen to that GPS as if it was Moses coming down <laughs> off the mountain. If it said turn left into the ocean, he would turn left into the ocean. Hey, maybe it's a shortcut. <laughs> We're submerged right now. <laughs> He's like, you're just jealous. You're jealous that I listened to her. <laughs> I am jealous. I'm jealous she's somewhere else and I'm in the fucking car with him. That's what I am jealous of. That's what I'm jealous of. I want that broad's life. We are, I'll tell you, here's the other thing we argue about. He snores and he doesn't believe me. <laughs> if somebody who shares a pillow with you tells you that you snore, believe them. <laughs> Why would I make that up? Now it's a game. Now I gotta prove to him. Now I'm a documentarian. I gotta film him, <laughs> right? Like I'm looking for a Yeti in the Andes. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Why would I make that up? I'm in the business of words. I'd make up something way more fantastical. Be like, you know what you do while you sleep? It's the weirdest thing. You juggle. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I heard this noise. Boom, boom, boom. I opened my eyes. Pillows hitting the ceiling. <laughs> in a rhythmic formation. It's ridiculous. Listen, I love him. I'm not going anywhere. And that fact was tested a couple years ago. He got sick, really sick. He's okay now. But at the time when he got sick, we Googled it on WebMD and we thought for sure he was dying, <laughs> right? And he said to me, he goes, if something happens to me, I want you to know you can get married again. I was like, oh my, I didn't even want to get married this time. <laughs> What are the odds I get knocked up at this age? <laughs> so I said, what do you mean? Like, he's testing me. You realize that, right? When he tells me I can get married again, he's testing me to see if I'm loyal. Of course I'm loyal. I'm a 3 a.m. friend. I will show up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a shovel and bail money, no questions asked, okay? <laughs> That's who I am. But he's testing, well, I get so mad he's testing me because what am I supposed to say to you can get married again? Huh? Oh, oh, can I have Frank's number in case you're in a coma? <laughs> so I gave him the answer that I knew he needed, all right? Because that's who I am. I love this man. This is the light of my life. I told him, I said, listen, no matter what happens to you, as long as I walk this earth, there will never be another man who gets to call me his wife. And you could tell he was relieved. I said, but I will bang a lot of people. <laughs> I'm Terry Pescatelli. Good night, God bless. Thank you so much. Good night.
in the 80s, the club owners segregated us because you would never see two or three blacks on a show. And we wouldn't see no women together either because they deemed us to all be the same. You know, comedy is about one person's reality. So if I have a period and I want to talk about it, I should be able to talk about it because I listen to enough of these white boys talk about their dicks. I didn't think you people knew who the fuck I was. I didn't, I? Um, I'm so glad to be on Ladies of a Certain Age because I'm getting up there. I'm the only one out of all these women that's a grandmother. Yeah, I got grandbabies, but it's not just my job to spoil my grandchildren. It's my job to teach them some shit. Because don't fuck with me, that's what it is, okay? <laughs> Uh, I was babysitting for my granddaughter, Zaya, and uh, I made her a sandwich, a bowl of soup, and some milk. She looked at that and said, we don't eat that. I said, well, what do you eat? We eat chicken McNuggets, chicken McNuggets. I said, don't sing about chicken, we black. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> so I went to her great-grandmother's house and got one of her live chickens. And I brought that chicken back. And she said, Grandma, what's that? I said, this, my love, is chicken McNuggets. And I threw that chicken in the yard. And I said, now you catch that chicken, we'll have some chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Why, after chasing that chicken for about three hours, she was more than happy to eat that sandwich and a bowl of soup. <laughs> and she don't fuck with me when we ride by McDonald's because she's scared she got to catch a cow. <laughs> my job is to teach. Now, some of you new parents, you fucking it up. You got the game messed up. I see you on TV. My child is my best friend. Your child is not your friend. Your child is your offspring, your progeny. It is your job to govern your child. Your child can be your friend when they pack their shit and get the fuck out your house. I ain't friends with nobody who can't buy weed or liquor. I just don't see where that's the win-win in this relationship. How many people have grown children still asking them for money? By applause. Before I came here, my daughter Magdalene asked me, Mom, do you have $185? I said, yes, I do, click. Because <laughs> I fuck with people. You know, some of you young people, you could have got up out your seat and let these older people have the seat. See, that's why the Shakespeare said, youth is wasted on the young. See, you motherfuckers don't think you gonna get old. <laughs> if you lucky, you will. Right now, your titties is perky and shit. <laughs> but one day, you gonna wake up and one titty gonna be over here and one titty gonna be over there. You gonna lift it up, find a gummy bear and eat it. <laughs> and say, ain't God good? See, you a young man, your nuts is tight. Your nuts is tight. But one day you gonna sit on the toilet, your nuts gonna hit the water. You gonna ask her to suck your dick, she gonna go, mm-mm, smell like boo-boo, can't do it. <laughs> See, the funny thing about young people is that they think their parents have a favorite child. We don't have a favorite child. All of our children are our favorites just for different reasons. Now, I'm not gonna say Adam is my favorite, but I'm gonna say he mine. I had him. My husband is from Trinidad. We got to the hospital at 2 a.m. Bill went to park the car, came back, 2.28, he was holding his son. He looked at me and said, you make that baby fast. <laughs> that baby outweighed his twin sisters. They thought he was twins. <laughs> that baby came three weeks early. I tell people he came out early because there was no more room in the inn. I nursed him till he was five. I'm lying. <laughs> I nursed him for a year. And I tell you young sisters, when you do have your babies, you should nurse them because it's a beautiful and bonding thing. And my husband thought it was beautiful and bonding too the first couple of months, but around five, six, seven months, he looking at this boy like he the master cock block of the free world. <laughs> he scared he ain't gonna see my pussy no more in life. 
We were fooling around and Adam started crying. I jumped up and started nursing him. Bill is pacing back and forth going, look at he, he do it on purpose. <laughs> Tell he to hurry up and eat. And my son with my tit in his mouth looked up at his daddy and smiled and patted my breast as if to say, later for you, Negro, later for you. <laughs> that sweet, precious boy told me something I didn't want to hear. Told me he was in love, that this girl was different and special. <laughs> I said, why am I the last one to find out? He said, cause Ma, you know how you are. And I said, how the fuck am I? <laughs> And his father and him went. <laughs> I said, well, what's special's name? He said, Melissa. I said, what's different about it? He said, she's an albino. <laughs> so I said, bring the rabbit over. <laughs> he brings Melissa over. <laughs> Melissa is a statuesque, blonde hair, blue eyed, look like a Swedish model. I said, boy, that ain't no albino. That's a cracker. What you talking about? <laughs> I'm teasing, I don't use those euphemisms in my home, nor have I taught my children to use those euphemisms. I just said that to say this. You can't tell your children who to love. They gonna love who the fuck they wanna love, and if you're wise, you'll keep your narrow-minded opinions to yourself and enjoy your grandchildren. I love Melissa to death, but that's the non-cookingest bitch I ever laid eyes on. <laughs> Everything she cooked, Campbell's soup, got something to do with it. She made some kind of gray gelatinous shit. Bill looked at it, said, me not eating not. I looked up at my son, I said, him not eating not. He said, you have to, I love her. I said, no, you fucking her, you gotta eat it. We going to Popeyes. Now, one of my twins is married to a woman. Don't look at me crazy, I support my children. And, and for the people that profess to be such great Christians, let us be clear on something. It's not between me and God, it's between her and God. And if I'm not mistaken, the Bible clearly states, judge not lest ye be judged. Now some of y'all got family members get drunk every weekend, you got to bail them out of jail. My daughter just eating pussy, the way I got it figured, I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> Is this too real for some of y'all? I just, okay. I remember like it was yesterday. Magdalene called me up. She said, Mama, Keisha gave me a two and a half carat platinum diamond ring. I said, what? She said, Keisha gave me a two and a half carat platinum diamond ring. I said, put Keisha on the phone. I said, Keisha, did you get my baby a ring? She said, yes, ma'am, I did. I said, what you trying to say? She said, well, I know I took her out your house and I know I'm 10 years older than her, but I love your daughter. I promise you, she won't want for nothing. All her needs will be met. I adore your daughter. I want to grow old with your daughter. And I said, wow. Her daddy didn't even say that to me. I just... <laughs> I said, put Magdalene back on the phone, please. I said, Magdalene, what kind of pussy eating is you over there doing? <laughs> I've been fucking your daddy for 10 years. He ain't gave me no two and a half carat platinum diamond ring. You tell mommy what you did. Tell mommy what you did. So she asked me, she said, will, will you tell daddy? And I said, fuck, I, I don't feel like that. And the reason I don't feel like that, because foreign black men are the most homophobic men on the face of the earth. And that's because homosexuality is not tolerated in their country or they eradicate it. So I, I don't feel like telling him, I don't, I, I don't. I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for him to come home and stuff, I'm nervous. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, oh, hi, Bill, how you doing? <laughs> how was your day? Me day good. Uh, 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 that's good, that's good. So, Bill, you know Magdalene, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He said, yeah, me know she. I said, well, Magdalene's uh, gay. He said, oh, ho. who's the cock and who's the hen? I said, Magdalene is the hen, but that's really not the issue. The issue is Keisha gave Magdalene a two and a half carat platinum diamond ring. And I've been fucking you for how long, man? How long? Well, I'm gonna tell y'all something because I got to go. <laughs> yeah, I got to fucking go. It's cigarettes to be smoked and weed to go look for. <laughs> um, you know, here lately in the news, there's been a lot of racial upheaval going on in this country. And I wanted to tell you because we're good friends now, because we talked about dick and everything, <laughs> is that we are all Americans. We are one nation under God. Hold on, hold on. And if we have never stuck together, we better stick together now. Because if any other country was ever to come over here and take over, we all be niggas and some of y'all are inexperienced. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be myself, y'all. Thank you. This is my whole career. When I get on the plane, I turn right or I turn left. I turn right if I'm a stand-up, and I sit in 38G. If I turn left, I'm being an actress, and I sit in 2A. Those are my two lives. Wow. I can be in 1A for 10 years. I want to go to 38G. I want to be among people. I want to talk. I want to be a stand-up comedian. I don't want you to think of me as being, you know, famous. I want you to think of me as somebody that will make you laugh. <laughs> nervous when you applaud that much, like you thought I was dead. Like, oh, she's alive, thank God! <sighs> How are you? It's, you know what? Thank you. It's very nice to be on um, women of a certain age. <laughs> um, because what would the all-male special be called? Congress? Um, <laughs> Like that of a certain age. What does that mean? If we were filming this in LA, everyone would be 24. That's it, done. Um, I actually live in Los Angeles. I uh, moved there in my 50s with my tween because I like a challenge. And um, since I've been in Los Angeles, everybody just talks about plastic surgery, just openly, all the time. And people are always coming up to me and they're like, oh my God, Caroline, your face is so full. What kind of filler do you use? Is it Juvederm or Restylane? And I'm like, fudge. It's fudge. <laughs> yeah. It's fudge. <laughs> I put a little bit of vanilla down by my mouth and then all around my eyes is Rocky Road. But, um... <laughs> I, I, I'm not a fan of living in Los Angeles for a number of reasons. One, I can't merge, so I have to leave my house in the lane that I want to end up in. And that just, like, takes forever. And um, it's a long way to San Francisco. Um, and I hate Waze so much. It's just, uh, this is my impression of Waze. Turn left into oncoming traffic. <laughs> Cross a five-lane highway. There is a feather 400 feet in front of you. Um, I do find the thing about aging is my memory is not so great. Like, whenever I walk in a room, I can't remember why I walked in that room, but for some reason, I always think there's going to be a clue in the fridge. And, um... I'm, <laughs> I'm always, like, halfway through a sandwich, like, oh, my God, I forgot to file my taxes. Oh, my God. It's terrible, the whole memory thing. If you see two middle-aged women having lunch together, they're both just staring at each other like, you know they don't remember what they had just said. <laughs> it's like an episode of Law and Order. I don't know, you said bird and then the bread came and then... <laughs> Something about your mother? I don't know. 
it comes from my father. My father, what, he obviously lost his memory because my father, I have two sisters, and he would say this to us all the time. He'd be like, girls, the most important thing in life is one thing, and if you know that one thing, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> what is it, Dad? What's what, honey? Um, I had my daughter when I was 44, and I am, yes, I know. It's impressive. I am 38 now, and I... Um, so my daughter is 10, and she comes home from school sometimes, and she's like, there's a girl that wants to become a boy, and a boy that wants to become a girl, and this is very normal for her. And so she was describing this boy, and she said, Mommy, he's non-binary. And I said, well, honey, what does that mean? And she goes, Mommy, you should really know. She could really know. And I'm like, okay, well, just explain it to me one more time. And she said, it means he doesn't identify as a boy or a girl. And I said, honey, that's called menopause. <laughs> um, it's very weird. I get, um, I get hit on by young men. I know, it's ridiculous. I, thanks for the complete and utter shock. And I, just like dead silence, like really, mm, no. I really, yeah, I do. I, <laughs> This gorgeous 25-year-old, he was so good looking, he was the stage manager on my show, and he said, Caroline, I wanna come home with you. And I said, are you locked out? <laughs> I... <laughs> like, do, 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 you, do you wanna use my phone? I'm... And he said, no, I wanna be with you. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'm gonna go home right now. I'm gonna need about a half an hour of lead time to shoot out every street lamp between here and my apartment. And uh, then I'm gonna put some temporary blinding drops in your eyes. They're gonna sting at first, but it's gonna make it better for both of us. And um, I'll be naked with my stomach over my head because I had a C-section at 44. <laughs> sleep with the young guy. I live in fear of his Facebook status saying, I fucked Aunt Hilda and it was magical. I can't do that. I can't do that. So this one cute boy, he kept on saying to me, send me a picture of your boobs. And I was like, what? And he goes, no, seriously, send me a picture of your boobs. So I'm like, you want me to send you a picture of my naked boobs? And he was like, yes. So I sent him my mammogram. And... <laughs> It got rid of his lump, so I... <laughs> I know you, like, people do this now, but you know what? So I tried to play along. Do you know how hard it is to take a good picture of your boob while holding the camera over your head so you don't have, like, 50 chins? I was like, because you're not going to send this. You know, like... <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> I'm, like, lying on the bed. They were both immediately on the side table. I, um... <laughs> exhausted from a long day, sound asleep. Come on, girls, take a picture. Um, <laughs> seriously, it was like bad children taking a picture. One was looking forward, the other one was looking back. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> so I finally, I texted him and I said, I'm gonna have to send them one at a time. I, <laughs> I can't. I, <laughs> So I, um, I study Kabbalah, and um, my sister's very supportive. She calls it Kablah blah. And my, and you know, it's like my teacher is from Israel, and he has this like crazy Israeli accent, and he's trying to really like teach me the way, but because of his accent, this is what he says. Caroline, the most important thing is that you fuck us. <laughs> Fuck us in the morning. <laughs> fuck us all day. <laughs> and fuck us right before bed. <laughs> I'm like, it's a long O. That is really gonna get you in quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> um, so this woman came up to me and she goes, you know, I know that you're a porn star. I Googled you. And I said, wasn't it obvious upon meeting me? And um, <laughs> why are they all porn stars? There's no porn character actors. And um, <laughs> not. 
The new porn neighbor. <laughs> I got your package. Anyway. Um, so this, she was right. It wasn't that she was a porn star. There's a woman who has my name. I think she's Korean, and she's a phone sex operator. I know, isn't that crazy? But there's not a lot of middle-aged phone sex operators. Hey, baby. Yeah, do you want to come over and bend me over the coffee table? Yeah. Well, not the whole way. I, I herniated L3 and L4. <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe I could climb up on top. Well, I can't because I tore my meniscus. But I... <laughs> Foot fetish? Do you like bunions? <laughs> Shingles? <sighs> maybe we could do shots. Flu shots. <laughs> I, um, I went to a plastic surgeon because I wanted to get a tummy tuck. And... Um, for, he, had, he had the meanest receptionist ever. So I walked in and she said, um, so what is it that you hate the most about yourself? And I was like, um, I said, I, ju I, just, I just want to talk to the doctor. I'll wait to talk to the doctor. She goes, what do you hate most about your body? And I was like, mm, okay, I'm gonna cry. And um, <laughs> she goes, I, I said, I just, I, I want to talk to the doctor. And uh, she goes, well, what do you hate the most? I'm like, you, I hate you right now. I, uh, you, I, I hate you. That's what I hate the most right now. So um, <laughs> anyway, the doctor came in and he did the worst thing possible. He went like this. Because you know in his head he was thinking, I'm going to buy a car. <laughs> or a very small boat. Mm. Uh, but he saw money. Anyway, <laughs> so he goes like this. He grabs my stomach, literally, and, and like walks backwards. <laughs> walking with my stomach <laughs> and he got like a fair distance away from me and he said you know what um this is not going to snap back because of your age and you don't have any elasticity and I was like well could you just walk it back then because Like this age, it's very tricky. I went to the gynecologist. I'm like, why does it hurt so much um, when I have sex with my boyfriend besides the fact that I hate him? And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> she said, because as we age, your vaginal walls get thinner. I'm like, oh really? I work out five times a week and the only part of my body that's getting thinner is my vagina. Great, great. I often hear as I walk down the street, her vagina's so thin. <laughs> it looks so much heavier on TV. <laughs> it's really very thin. Being a woman in comedy uh, is not easy. You have to be your own biggest fan, you know? And not in a big-headed way, but in the, if you're not your own biggest fan, who's gonna be? The men back when I started, they were just ridiculous. Coke snorting, golf playing, arrogant little boys. They weren't that respectful of women. I had a 357 Magnum, and if we was gonna fight, I knew who was gonna get hurt. I stayed in a condo for an entire week with a guy who was convicted of multiple rapes, and I didn't complain about it, even though I knew he was creepy, because I, I wanted to work. You know, I went from being a privileged male to now I'm in like four different uh, oppressed minorities. How many times did people come up to you and go, you know what, I love you, you say all the things that I'm thinking and I didn't get to say myself? Absolutely. Sometimes to my husband, you know? <laughs> because I would. I think at the beginning I felt like I will speak, I'm going to tell you all the things that a woman's actually really thinking about yes. you.
Daniel, how you doing? Nothing. Still nothing. <laughs>